with the recent rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine, we are just starting to see doctors and nurses and other frontline workers in Canada receive the second dose of the vaccination. Now, with the second dose, it seems that there are more symptoms. Nonetheless, doctors are still recommending that people get vaccinated. A lot of them say just take the day off work if you can on the day of your second dose. Amongst the side effects that are noted with the second dose, one of the most popular is fever and chills. And being a neuroscience channel, we're going to be talking about the neuroscience behind the symptom of a fever. Now I know fevers tend to be associated with the immune system and we think of them as a byproduct of the immune system, but today we're going to discuss how the nervous system is involved in the production of a fever. So sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. back to NeuroSciQ for another week's YouTube video. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe so that you are in the know with all our neuroscience videos and you can help support our mission of making neuroscience education accessible for everyone. Now today we are talking about the COVID-19 vaccine and some of its symptoms. So first of all, let's talk about vaccination. Well, when you get a vaccination, you're essentially preparing your body's immune system for the virus or whatever it is you're getting vaccinated against. So first things first, are the symptoms that are being witnessed part of the placebo effect? Based off trials, the answer is simply no. In clinical trials, they often include a control group to avoid this discrepancy and although the controls did report some symptoms like pain at the injection site, most of the people in the experimental group reported significantly more symptoms than the control group. So it seems that these symptoms are real and it seems that they are because of the vaccination. Some of the symptoms being reported include muscle aches, pain at the injection site, fever, and chills. And these are amongst the most popular symptoms that are reported. Since we are a neuroscience channel today, we are going to focus on one of these symptoms. We are focusing on the symptom of having a fever. Now in one of our other videos, we talked about the neurosymptoms of COVID-19 and we came to the conclusion that these symptoms arise because of the interactions between the immune system and the nervous system. Now, it's no different when you get vaccinated. The vaccine activates the immune system and a lot of the symptoms experienced are because of the activation. So what is a fever? Well, let's talk about, first of all, what is normal? Normally our body temperature tends to be around 36 to 39 degrees Celsius with the optimal temperature being 37 degrees Celsius. The reason why our body keeps this strict temperature is for our cells to function we need everything to be kept at a temperature that prevents the denaturation of proteins and can allow cells to carry out their normal functions. So maintaining a temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius is vital for our motor functions, our awareness, and our cellular functioning. Now, how do we maintain this normal temperature? There is an area in the brain called the hypothalamus, which is often regarded as the thermostat of our body. While it regulates things like temperature, it also regulates a lot of other functions such as thirst and hunger. So the hypothalamus helps our body maintain this state of equilibrium known as homeostasis. So naturally, if you walk into a cold room, your hypothalamus is responsible for the reactions that help heat your body up and keep you warm. Things like shivering or even grabbing a blanket are instigated by the hypothalamus. So why do we get fevers? Fevers help kill infection. So think of it, if our body needs to be kept at 37 degrees Celsius, for our body to function, well, most other proteins need this temperature as well. So 
over years of evolution, our bodies have evolved to instigate a fever to help fight off viral infections and other infections. So let's look at the circuitry responsible for fevers. Normally, there's an area in the hypothalamus called the medial preoptic nucleus. The median preoptic nucleus usually shuts down the rest of the hypothalamus, inhibiting the heat response. In particular, the medial preoptic nucleus shuts down the paraventricular nucleus, the dorsal medial nucleus, and the rostral raphae pallidus. So, when the body has an inflammatory response that is instigated by an infection, the immune system releases prostaglandins and cytokines. Now, we've talked about cytokines before, but in particular, there is interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 that are byproducts of the cytokine storm, and these cytokines are actually pyrogenic. So what does pyrogenic mean? Well, pyro means fire and genic means generating. So generating heat or fire. But how do these cytokines generate heat? Well, these cytokines will bind to receptors on the hypothalamus, particularly receptors in the dorsal medial nucleus. And this actually inhibits the nucleus, which allows the rest of the hypothalamus to function. So we have a release from inhibition. So all of a sudden, all these thermogenetic areas in the hypothalamus are released from inhibition, and now we have thermogenesis. Thermogenesis is the generation of heat. So in response, the body's temperature is elevated because now the thermostat isn't shut down. Your body's thermostat is actually in overdrive. Now this will happen until your immune system stops producing cytokines and until they stop binding to the hypothalamus. Once the hypothalamus gets rid of these cytokines, then thermogenesis will be inhibited again. The hypothalamus controls thermogenesis through the release of other hormones and neurotransmitters, particularly norepinephrine and acetylcholine. Noepinephrine will be released, which will activate brown adipose tissue, which helps keep you warm. This also will cause vasoconstriction of the vessels in your extremities. So your extremities are your feet, your toes, your nose, and if you've ever been outside in the cold, you probably realize your hands and feet and nose get cold first. This happens because your blood vessels will shrink, so not as much blood is getting to the tips of your fingers, the tips of your nose, and the tips of your toes. This happens to prevent heat loss. Our blood is flowing through our body and it carries heat with it to warm up our body. So to stay warm, we don't want to lose heat from the tips of our fingers, the blood vessels shrink. The acetylcholine that is released will cause shivering. So acetylcholine is one of the fight or flight hormones as well. And so if this is released, that's why you get the chills and start shivering. This is all done in effort to keep you warm. And so that's why when the immune system is activated, people tend to get a fever accompanied by chills. This elevated temperature helps your body fight off your disease, your viral infection, whatever it is that activated the immune system. So when you get vaccinated, even though you are not infected with the whole virus, your immune system is still activated. In fact, the whole goal is to activate your immune system. But by doing so, there are interactions that take place in your brain that may lead to the development of a fever and chills. That's all for today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want, comment any future videos down below. And if you have any questions, leave them down below as well. I'm happy to answer. That's all for today's video. I'll see you next time on NeuroSciQ. Stay happy and healthy.